Okay, so we were talking about linear orders. What was a linear order? A linear order is a partial order in which every two elements are comparable with respect to the order relation. And we can also define strict linear orders. What's the strict linear order? A strict linear order is a strict partial order where every distinct two elements are comparable, okay? So we just defined those. I'm not going to give examples of linear orders at the moment because we're going to learn a more important notion, namely the notion of well order, and we're going to see many examples of those later. So at the moment, no need for many examples. Now, let's introduce some terminology, okay? So let less than, less than or equal to be a partial order relation. on a set x, okay? And let's say that y is a subset of x. Now, an element of y called little y is set to be, okay, Let's see, I have four bullet points here. So let's say of y. It's called a least element of y. If blah blah happens, it's called a minimal element of y. If blah blah happens, a greatest element of y. If blah blah happens, and a maximal. Why if blah blah happens. Now let's put those blah blahs. We should also say with respect to this relation. Now least means, it means what you think it means. It means least. It's supposed to be less than or equal to every guy in Y. So for all elements in Y, Y is less than or equal to X, okay? Now, minimal means something different than least. Minimal does not mean least. It means that there are no elements that are strictly less than you, okay? So it means the following. If there is some x which is less than or equal to y, it is actually y, okay? And greatest means you're supposed to be, it's the, these two are the dual notions of these two. Greatest means that you're supposed to be greater than equal to every element in Y. And maximal means that if you happen to find some element which is greater than equal to you, then it's actually you, okay? Now, we're going to keep using these adjectives in future, so let's under make sure that we understand these. Let's see an example. Consider a partial order relation. Partial order relation less than or equal to curly less than or equal to on. Again, just like the last time, I'm just going to keep using certain sets whose construction we have yet not covered because, well, I need these sets to give you examples. Otherwise, it's going to be some, it's just going to be completely abstract without any examples. So let's take natural numbers and zero out of natural numbers and Let's consider the following relation. X is less than or X is curl less than or equal to Y if there exists some natural number besides zero such that Y is K times X. So it's the divisibility relation, okay? 
if x divides y, I'm simply saying that x is the same equal to y. Now, I assigned last time that this is a partial order relation, if you remember. Like, I assigned that you should prove that this is a partial order relation. It's easy. Now, let's understand the structure of this partial order relation. OK, first of all, I'm not going to prove that this is a partial order relation because that's your assignment. Second, the claims I'm about to write on the board, I don't want to prove them because proving them will require a couple lines of words, whereas I can just show you what I want to show by a diagram. OK, I'm going to write down the elements of this set on the board, and the ones I'm going to write on the left are supposed to be less than or equal to the ones on the right. So let's pick two. With respect to this relation, two is less than or equal to what? Two, uh, if, you put, if you put two here, for which y values, two is less than or equal to y? We have two itself. OK, what about three? No, because you cannot find such a k that three is k times two. But we have four. OK, so 2 is less than or equal to 4. It's less than or equal to 6. Is 4 less than or equal to 6? No. But 4 is less than or equal to 8. OK, let's see. 6 is less than or equal to 3 because 3 divides 6. And let's put 12 somewhere. Let's put 12 over here. 4 is less than or equal to 12. 6 is less than or equal to 12. OK. And let's put 5 here. We have 4. 3, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK. 5 was not less than or equal to any of these, but it's less than or equal to 10. Let's put 10 somewhere. Let's put 10 over here. 2 is less than or equal to 10. 5 is less than or equal to 10. And 3 is less than or equal to 12. And it's going it's gonna to go like this. It has a weird partial order structure, OK? All the elements on the left are less than or equal to all the elements on the right. And if I had one, OK, let's consider this one first. If I had one, one is less than or equal to all the elements, OK? 14, and so on. It's a partial order structure which is going to look like this on a diagram. Do you already understand the order on the diagram? Yes, yes. You don't have to, but yes. But you know that this is less than or equal to that. Yes, it's already connected. Don't worry about the diagrams, but you're right, yes. I don't have to connect it because by transitivity I have that. Anyway, what's the minimal element of this partial order? One. One. Okay, what's the least element of this partial order? Let's start with that. It's one, right? It's less than or equal to everything. Now, let's also remove one from this set, and let's consider the following partial order. Now, one is gone. What's the least element? There are no least elements. Because there is no element which is less than or equal to everything. What are the minimal elements? The minimal elements are these guys. OK? You cannot find and a natural number, which is less than or equal to this guy, or this guy, or this guy, or this guy, with respect to this relation. OK? So exercise prove that the minimal elements of this of this set with respect to this relation are the prime numbers. Okay, so with respect to divisibility, minimal elements are exactly the prime numbers over here. Now, is the difference between least and minimal understood? OK, over here I don't have any least element, but I have minimal elements. 
Similarly, if I flip the picture, don't write this, you don't have to write this. If I flip the picture, now these are maximal elements, okay? But they're not the greatest, ele uh, they're not the greatest elements. So the point is, this notion is weaker than this notion, and this notion is weaker than this notion. I'm not going to prove that this is actually stronger than this, but that should be obvious. Assume that a subset Y has a least element. Then that least element has to be minimal, okay? Because what's minimality? This is exactly the negation of the following sentence, okay? Not minimal means that there, there is some element which is less than equal to U and it's different than U. If you have such an element, then you, if there is such an element, then Y cannot be the le a least element, okay? So the point is, being least implies being minimal, but it's not the other way around, as you can see over there. Similarly, being greatest means being greatest implies being maximal, but not the other way around. Okay. So, is that understood? Greatest is stronger, this implies this, greatest implies maximals, but it's not, the other direction is not true. Least implies minimal, but the other direction is not true as well, okay? Questions about these? Now, why have we introduced these? Because in a second I'm gonna define well orders and it's going to have something to do with least elements. But before that, let me check my notes to see if I'm skipping something. Okay. Let me put it over here. In general, being minimal or maximal, well, maximal, respectively, maximal, does not imply being least respectively, let's see, greatest. Okay, this is what I just said. However, you can, this implication is actually true under certain circumstances. Which circumstances, if you have, if any two elements are comparable, okay? So, let, this is an exercise. Let listener equal to be a partial order relation on a set X and was, let, be, let Y be a subset of X. Now, before I continue, in the previous example, I just asked you the least element, the greatest element, and so on. But if you look at the definition, I cannot simply talk about the least element. I can talk about the least element of some subset of the set on which I have a partial order relation. If I simply say the least element, a least element, a minimal element, a greatest element, and a maximal element, I simply mean you're, I'm implicitly assuming that Y is supposed to be X, okay? If I have a partial order relation and if I talk about the least element, I simply mean the least element of the whole set. Otherwise, I should actually like say this, least element of, of Y minimal element of y and so on. One more thing, again, I'm not going to write this on the board. Over here, I did not use the article the. I used, I just put a least element. As we observed in the previous example, which was over here, which was erased, there can be more than one minimal element. So. Putting A here makes sense. Similarly, there can be more than one maximal element. However, by 
anti-symmetry of this relation, least elements and greatest elements, if exist, are unique. So I should really put here the least element and the greatest element, okay? But that's not, like, it requires one little step, namely the step where you show that by anti-symmetry these are unique, so they're not part of the definition. So prove that least elements and greatest elements are unique if they exist, but these need not be unique. Minimal and maximal elements. Anyway, so let's have a partial relation on a set and a subset. Why? Show that, okay, let's sub, uh, let y be a subset of x with the property that any two elements of y are comparable with respect to this relation. Now show the following. Show that if y is a minimal element of y, then it is the least element. Similarly, if you put, a ma if you put maximal here, you're going to get the greatest. Okay? So in general, minimal is weaker than max, uh, minimal is weaker than least, and maximal is weaker than greatest. However, if you're just looking at a subset in which every two elements are comparable, then minimal is the same as least, and maximal is the same as the greatest. Okay. Now, are these notions understood? Are you sure? Are you sure that in future when I say minimal element, you're not going to think of a least element? OK. Then we can start talking about well orders, which is probably the most important. Well, OK. I was about to say the most important topic of the course. The most important topic of the course is not what I'm about to write on the board, but like. Set theory is about the study of infinite sets, okay? And in order to study infinite sets, we use objects called ordinal numbers. If you look at the definition of ordinal number in section whatever, you're going to see the following. An ordinal number is a transitive set which is well ordered with respect to blah blah, okay? So how the second half of the course will be based on mathematical objects which are special kinds of well orders. Okay, so this notion is important and I don't think you actually covered this in 111. Okay, so make sure that you learn this well. Definition. A linear order Let's enter equal to on a set X. By the way, sometimes people also call this a total order, okay? I'm just going to use the word linear order. So a linear order on a set X is called a well order relation Let's put the word relation here. If Every non empty subset of X has a least element. Now, I'm using the word least here, but I can actually put minimal here because it's not going to change anything. Why? I'm already working with a linear order. And in linear orders, any two elements are comparable. When any two elements are comparable, minimal is the same as least. So I don't have to put minimal here. I'm just going to write least. OK. Oh, the companion definition.
a strict linear order relation less than is on a set X is called a strict wall order relation if there are equivalence ways of defining this. I can say the following. Every non-empty subset of X is the least element with respect to this relation. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the following. If the corresponding, or maybe I should say induced, partial order relation less than or equal to is a well order relation. You remember this, the induced partial orderings, like for every strict partial order we have a partial order, for every partial order we have a strict partial order and so on. So I'm going to define it like this. Here is the reason. If you look at the previous definition, which was over here, what I introduced for adjectives, I defined minimal elements, maximal elements, least and greatest elements for partial order relations. I can define all those notions for strict partial orders as well. Okay? How can I do that? What do you mean? Wait, what? You mean this? You don't like the word. I can put corresponding here if you want. Associated, corresponding. Okay, maybe I should remember. I should remind you what this is. This is simply the following relation: x is less than or equal to y if and only if x is less than y or x equals y. You remember this relation? I'm talking about that. So you call this relation a strict well order if this relation is a well order relation. Anyway, what was I talking about? Okay, all those adjectives, minimal, maximal, least, greatest, I can define those for strict partial orders as well. But I'm not going to do that. We can define those for strict partial orders in equivalent ways. You can say that an element, you can say that an element x is of a subset y is a least element with respect to this relation, if and only if it's the least element with respect to the induced relation. You can define it like this, or you can actually, well, let me write it down, why don't I? Okay. So let's say that we have a strict partial order, and we have a subset Y of X on which this relation is defined. So I pick some Y and Y. This is called the least element if, let me write it over here, for all X and Y, y is strict less than x or y equals x, okay? Being least means this, being minimal means the following. For all x and y, it is not the case that X is not strict less than Y, okay? And greatest element if the following happens. We have this and maximal.
So you can define these adjectives for strict partial orders as well. Okay? And instead of this definition, I can simply say that a strict linear order is a strict well order if and only if every non epi subset has a least element. Okay? Is this understood? This is a relation, right? Yeah. What's the relation? It's a subset of the Cartesian product. Okay. Anyway, we're talking about well orders. There are equivalent ways of defining this. So let's introduce some terminology about well orders. Maybe before that, I should tell you why we are doing all these. Okay, there are many partial order sets which are different. I haven't defined what different means. I, I haven't defined the notion of order isomorphism, but when I define it, you'll see that there are many, many different partial orders. And there are many different well orders. But when it, uh, sorry, linear orders. There are many different linear orders as well. But when it comes to well orders, something strange happens. There are many different well orders, however, somehow all of them resemble each other. Okay, that's not true. I'm, I, I should re rephrase that. Okay. A well order is a special kind of linear order, which means that if I were to somehow put all these elements on a diagram, they should just live on some kind of line, okay? Because everything is comparable. Pretend that this is some well order. I don't know how the elements are put, okay? And you have some other well order. We shall, the point of all this is our aim in this lecture and the next lecture and possibly the next next lecture is proving the following. Given two linear or uh, given two well orders, Either this one embeds into this, this is like a part of this one, or this is a part of this one, or they are the same, okay? We want to prove that. All the work we're about to do is, it's aimed at that, okay? So, I'm gonna again introduce some terminology which will be used in the proof of that. Ah. Before introducing the terminology, maybe I should also talk about like partially ordered sets, linear ordered sets, and so on. Given a set X and a partial respectively linear or well order relation less than or equal to on x. The tuple x less than or equal to is called a partially respectively linearly or well ordered set. Okay? So if I talk about a partially, like if I say that a tuple like this is a partially ordered set, I mean that this is a partial order relation on this set and that's that. If I say that this is a linearly ordered set, it means that this is a linear order relation on this set. If I say that this is a well ordered set, this is a well ordered relation on this set. And we can also do this for, I mean the this terminology goes for strict a partial order, strict linear orders, and strict well orders as well. Okay? Now, what was I about to define? Oh, predecessors of an element. So, let S less than or equal to be a well ordered set. And S be an element. The 
predecessors of S, predecessors of S is the set is the set of X in S such that X is strictly less than S. Now this brings back some memories from last week. Remember I told you that you should learn this relationship between induced partial order, uh, partial orders and induced strict order, uh, orders. And you don't like the word induced, so I'm just going to say associated or corresponding. Like for every partial order we have an induced partial, uh, for every partial order we have a strict partial order, and for every strict partial order we have a partial order. So you, I told you that like you should be able to jump between these. And I already started using that. I started with a well order relation. I'm just using the induced strict well ordering, okay? So I don't want to write here x is less than or equal to s and x is different than s. That's just waste of symbols. And explaining this was a waste of time, but that's another issue. So this is the predecessors of s. Predecessor simply means that it's the set of elements which precede s, okay, with respect to this relation. Now, pretend that this is not the least element. Then this is always line empty. Why? This is your well ordered set S. If you have an element which is not the least element, because this is not the least element, there is something less than there's something over here. There's something which is strictly less than this. So this is always line empty. Okay? If you pick the least element, this is the empty set. Okay, that's that. That's fine. There's nothing conceptually difficult about this, so we can move on to the next thing. Okay, we define that if S is a non maximal element. then the least element of the set is called the successor of S. So the predecessors of S, the successor of S, and is denoted by the following notation as plus. So let's understand this definition now. Again, I have a well order set, I have an element. Now, in order, I define the successor of an element, but in order to do that, I pick the non-maximal element. You'll see the reason. Pick, pick a non-maximal element. If S is non-maximal, it means that there's something greater than S. Which means that this set, the set of T, which is strictly greater than S, is non-empty. What can you tell me about non-empty sets in a well-ordered in a well-ordered set? If you have a non-empty set in a well-ordered set, then it has a least element. That's that's the definition, right? Every non-empty subset should have a least element. If X is non-maximal, this is non-empty. Therefore, it has a least element. So in order to for me to talk about the least element of this set, I have to start with an unmaximal element, okay? So if you have an unmaximal element, the least element of this set is called the successor. Why is this called the successor? Because here is your S. You look at the set, set of all T, which, which, is greater, which is strictly greater than S, and you look at the least element of this. Now, you be call this S plus. This is the successor. Because this is the successor, by definite, well, because this is the least element of this set, there cannot be anything between S and S plus. So this is simply the next element. Okay? You have S. This is the next element. This is the least element, which is strictly greater than S. Okay? Now, you can notice that 
this is true for all, like, this guy exists for all non-maximal elements. So I can do the following. Okay, I have a well-ordered set. Pretend that this is not empty. It can be empty, but pretend that this is not empty. It means that it has an element. Let's put that. By definition of being a well-ordered set, if S is not empty, then it has a least element. Now, if this is not maximal, then it has a successor. Let's call, let me call this M. This is a successor. If this is not maximal, it is a successor as well. If this is not maximal, this is a successor as well. This is a successor as well. And I, I can go like this. Maybe one of this is a maximal element and I stopped, which means that in that case I have like finitely many helms here, that's fine. If not, I have all these guys. Okay, so what? Now, I can take all these guys out of S. I remove these guys from S. Maybe that's all of S, in which case that's fine. Pretend that it's not. Then, okay, take this, remove this from S. If the remaining thing is not empty, then it has a least element. Let's call this S. Now, if this is, not ma if this is maximal, that's fine. This is my well-ordered set. If not, this has a successor. Okay, maybe this is maximal. If that's the case, then this is my well-ordered set. That's fine. If not, it is a successor. And I can just keep repeating the same thing. What am I trying to get at? We're going to give a precise meaning to what I'm doing right now when we learn about ordinals, but the point is well-ordered sets are obtained like this. They have a least element, they have a next element, and so on. You go like this. If at some point you run out of elements, that's fine. Then you have your variable set. If not, you have this chain, and after that, there comes some element. If you have an element, then you keep doing this. Maybe at some point you run out of elements, in which case it's fine. If not, you have another chain. And you can go like this. We shall learn in future that all well-ordered sets basically look like this. You have copies of this added back to back. Okay? And that's exactly kind of the reason why any two well or uh, given in two well or set, one of them is a part of the other one or they are the same. Like all well or sets look like this. They have copies of this guy. Not necessarily this. Maybe at this point you run out of elements. This is your maximal element, so there are no successors. That's fine, this is a well ordered set. You have like infinitely many guys here. This is less than this, this is less than this, this is less than this. Then you have three guys here, which are all greater than equal to these guys, and that's it. That's a well ordered set as well, okay? Of course, I have to define the order relation, but everyone can see that this is a well ordered set, right? Everybody understands this relation. This is less than this, this is less than this, and so on. Okay. So we define successors, we define predecessors, let's also define initial segments and we're going to stop. Blah, 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 blah. A subset I of S is called an initial segment. of this relation. I'm, I'm continuing this paragraph over here. If I is the it's the set of predecessor. Well, no, I don't want to define it like this. Yeah. I don't want to define it like that. That's going to, that would be the definition of a proper initial segment. I want this predecessors of any other moments. Predecessors of any element in I is it's a subset of I. An initial segment I is called
a proper initial segment if i is different than s. Now let's understand this and we're going to stop. So let me give you an example of a well ordered set. This is my element. I'm just going to name this A. This is my successor. This is the successor of successor. Pretend that I have the ability to put infinitely many dots here. So this is less than this, this is less than this, and so on. This is a well ordered set. It just looks like natural numbers, OK? Indeed, but we put natural numbers here. 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, I'm going to do, I'm just going to put an element here. I'm going to call it omega because I like the Greek symbol omega. And I'm declaring this element to be greater than or equal to all these guys. Now, this is still a well ordered set. You can check that every non empty subset has a least element. And I'm just going to put two more elements. I'm going to put a successor to this, and I'm going to put a successor to the successor. And I'm not going to put any more elements. Now, this is a well-ordered set, OK? So these guys are greater than or equal to all these guys. They go like this. This is a well-ordered set. Now, let's read the definition. So I have a well-ordered set. I, a subset is called an initial segment if whenever I pick an element inside, its predecessors belong to that subset. Let's pick some guy. Let's pick four. What's the set of predecessors of four? It's the set 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So if four is inside my i, then all these guys are inside i. So initial segment simply means that being closed downwards. So whenever some element is in i, everything was equal to that is in i. So this is an initial segment because it's closed downwards. Whenever it contains some element, it contains everything less than that. This is also an initial segment. OK? Indeed, the whole thing is an initial segment. Because that's simply like true because when you pick this to be S, this is by definition a subset of S. So, Initial segments, which are not the whole thing, are called proper initial segments. And why is this important? Because we're going to use this notion in the proof of the claim I talked about today. So don't worry about it. Just understand the terminology now. Initial segments simply are subsets which are closed downwards, meaning that whenever you have an element, you have everything below that. And a proper initial segment is an initial segment, which is not the whole thing. OK? So what have we learned today? Let's go over that, and we're going to stop. We learned some stuff before this. Let's ignore that. We learned well orders. A well ordered, set, a well -ordered relation is a linear order relation. It's a special kind of linear order relation where every non empty subset has a least element. OK, we have a dual notion for strict linear orders. OK, if you have a strict linear order where every non empty subset has a least element, you call it a strict well order relation. Or you can define it like this. Given a well order relation, we, can, we associate it like, given a well order relation and, a, and an element, we define three things. The predecessors of this element, the set of guys which is strictly less than this, the successor of this the successor of an element, which exists if this guy is not maximal, is the least element which is greater than s. So it's the element that comes right after s. And we also define initial segments, okay, which are closed downwards, uh, which are uh, the subsets of s which are closed downwards, okay. So next lecture we're going to start. Uh, we're going to. Start the next lecture by proving that every proper initial segment is the predecessors of it's the set of predecessors, uh, predecessors of some element. Okay, and then after that we're going to define order isomorphism, what it means for partial orders to be the same, and then hopefully I don't think we can, but we will try to prove that. 
given any two well-ordered sets, either one of them is an initial segment of the other or they are the same in the sense of order isomorphism. Okay, so for taking extra four minutes, we shall stop now. I'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>